Let's talk about several different ways that we can edit footage into a Final Cut Pro project. And of course, part of that process is deciding what portions of a video clip we want to include in the project. And so we'll also talk about how we can explore the footage in more detail and how we can set ranges, which are really important. To begin with though, I want to free up some space in my interface. I still have this search field showing up, so I'm going to click here. That gets rid of that. And then I want to get rid of the skimmer info, so I'll go to the View Menu, Browser, and then down to Skimmer Info. And then in our project already, we have this Interview 01 clip that we dragged in in the last video. Let's say we want to follow that with Interview 03. So I'm going to come up here to the browser and I'll scroll down till I see Interview 03. There it is. And then I already mentioned that we can skim and play back using the space bar. So for example, I can just move my mouse pointer to skim over the clip and then I'll hit the space bar to play it back just as a quick review. So here we go, space bar. Okay. So what do you think? I love it. I can't wait to like, I can't wait to and I'll hit the space bar to stop the playback. So that's a good way to explore what's in a clip, but there's an even faster way in a lot of cases, and that's to use a keyboard shortcut. In fact, in this case, it's a series of keyboard shortcuts, J, K, and L on the keyboard. J goes in reverse, K stops playback, and L goes forward. And if you hit J or L multiple times, you even go faster. So for example, if I go in reverse, hitting J, this is what it looks like. And then I'll hit K to stop playback, and then I'll go forward hitting L. What do you think? I love it. I and then I'll hit L again to go faster. And then I'll hit K to stop playback, and now I'm going to hit J on the keyboard to go in reverse again, and this time I'm going to tap it a couple more times to go even faster. So here we go, J. And then again. And then again. And then K to stop, and then same thing for forward, L. So, what do you think? And then L, and then L again, and then K to stop playback. So you can very quickly move through your footage this way. It's very useful. Another thing you can do is use the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard. Left goes back one frame, right goes forward one frame. So watch this, I'm gonna go back one frame. So left arrow, and left arrow again, and again, and again, and again. So if you wanna go one frame at a time, you can do that, or you can just hold it down and it kinda of goes in slow motion. So here we go, I'll hold down the left arrow key, and then I'll go right arrow key one time, and then again, and then again, and then I'll hold it down to kind of go forward slow motion. It totally just rock this look. So if you want to get to a specific frame, the left and the right arrow keys are your friends. Now I'm going to hit J on the keyboard to go towards the beginning of the clip. I'm going to do it a couple times to go kind of fast. So J, and then J, and then I'll hit K. And what I'm doing is I want to set a range. A range is a series of frames with a start frame and an end frame, and then all the frames in between, but it's not the whole clip. I mean, the range could be the whole clip technically, but when we talk about ranges, we're saying it's not the whole clip. It's only a portion of the clip that we want to use in our project. So to set a range, I could just do this. I could just click and drag like this. I can start from where the playhead is right there, just click and drag and drag it out like this and get to the end where she's done talking. And now I don't have the whole clip selected. If you see that there, this portion and this portion not selected. So that won't be included in the clip when I drag it in or when I edit it into the project. And by the way, when you create a range like this, that's a persistent selection. So if I click over here to deactivate, notice that I don't have it selected anymore, but the range is still there. If you wanna get rid of a range, what you do is you just option click somewhere in the range and it gets rid of it. And you can have more than one range. So I could go like this, I could click and drag to set a range there. And then I can command click and drag to set a range here too. So now there are two different ranges on the same clip. And if I wanna get rid of both of them, I'll just option click out here and that makes both of them disappear. And by the way, when I say command click here, I mean hold down command on the keyboard and then click and drag with the mouse. What I'll do is I'm gonna skim over here and then I'm gonna click to move the playhead right to where that is. I also selected the whole clip, which is not what I want. I wanna start my range right about where the playhead is right now. So I can go left or right on the keyboard. So I've got the left arrow key and the right arrow key and I'm gonna set this start point right before I start talking. And instead of clicking and dragging this time, I'm gonna use keyboard shortcuts and you can get them. Go to the mark menu and you can see set range start is I on the keyboard. That stands for in point. That's what we used to call it before start. And then we also have out point, which is set range end or out point O. And so let's try that. Where the playhead is right now, I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard to set an in point. So here we go, I on the keyboard, that sets an in point. And then I'll use L on the keyboard to go forward through the clip. 
a couple so times. Cool. I love it. I can't, wait to, like, I can't wait to go somewhere public and totally just rock this. Look. And I'll hit K at the end. I'm going to go back a few frames using the left arrow. Oh, look. And then forward using the right arrow. And then when I get to where I want to set an out point, I hit O on the keyboard, and that sets that as a range. Now that I have this range selected, notice I'm not including this beginning part here. I'm going to hit the space bar to play that back so you can see what we're not including. Okay. The part where she goes K and turns her head, we're not including that. I just want to have this section, this range, get into my project. Now once I have this selected, there's multiple ways to edit into your Final Cut Pro project. A very common way is to use what's called an append edit. An append edit will just take whatever you have selected and drop it in at the end of your storyline. So here I have the storyline here and it would drop the clip in here. It's, it'd be the same thing as if I just click and drag and bring it down like this, like that. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. Notice the playhead is at the beginning of the project. When you do an append edit, it doesn't matter where the playhead is. It's always going to just edit the clip that you have selected at the end of the storyline. So in this case, I've got a couple different ways I can do an append edit. One way I can do it is by clicking on the append edit button right here. So I could click this button. So here we go on three, two, one, boom and it adds the clip at the end of the storyline. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. Another way I can do it, if I hover over this, you can see the tool tip and there's a keyboard shortcut, the letter E on the keyboard. So with this up here, I'm just going to hit E on the keyboard. Here we go on three, two, one, E. That's called an append edit. It's probably the most popular type of edit that I personally do. Now let's talk about an insert edit. An insert edit will insert something in between other things that you already have in your project. So for example, let's say that we have this interview O2 clip and I'm gonna option click to get rid of the range. So I'll just option click here, it gets rid of the range and I'm gonna set a new range. So I'll kind of skim to the beginning. I'll hit the space bar to start the playback. I am shaving. Actually, I'm gonna stop playback by hitting the space bar again and I'll use the left and right arrows to get to the beginning right before she starts talking. So maybe right around there. I'm listening with my ears, but also I'm looking at the audio meter here to see when she's talking. I'll come back up here and I'm gonna set an in point right before she starts talking. So when I get to the frame I want, I'll hit I on the keyboard and then I'll hit L to go forward. I am shaving my head because and I'll hit I L want again. to and I think it looks cool. And I heard it's very empowering, especially for women, just because you don't see that a lot on women. And and I'll stop playback by hitting K, and I'm gonna go back. I wanna cut this right before she says and. So I'm gonna hit the left arrow, hold that down. So after she says women and before she says and, so maybe right around here. And you can also see the valley there in the waveform letting me know approximately where the frame is between when she ends one word and then she starts the next one. With the playhead right around there, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to set an out point, and now I have this range selected. So let's say I want to take this interview O2 clip, and I want to insert it between interview 1 and interview 3. So what I do is I move the playhead first, because it's very important that you pay attention to where the playhead is when you're doing an insert edit. So if I want to insert this in, one thing I can do is just click the insert button. So with this selected, come down here, click the insert button boom, it inserts it between interview one and interview three. So that's one thing I can do. I'll hit Command Z to undo that. Another thing I can do is use the W key, which is the keyboard shortcut for insert. So here we go, using W, so three, two, one, W. Okay, so it inserted it between those other clips and I'll hit Command Z to undo. And by the way, I should also mention, if you wanna get your playhead exactly to an edit point, it's very helpful to have snapping turned on. Snapping helps you get right to a certain point. You can see how it kind of snaps right to the edit point. You can turn snapping on or off using this button here. It toggles it on or off, on. You have that kind of purplish blue color there. Snapping can be super useful. Another way, by the way, you can do an insert edit is by clicking and dragging to a specific location. So for example, I'll just click this interview O2 clip. I'm gonna drag it down. And watch what happens when I move my mouse pointer right between these two clips. You see how it kind of creates a gap there for me? It pushes interview 03. It kind of creates this little blue frame there letting me know where this clip is going to go. And now I can let go and it inserts that clip there. It pushed interview three back to create room for it. That's an insert edit. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. I wanna show you an overwrite edit. Once again, this is one where you have to pay attention to where the playhead is because it's gonna start wherever the playhead is. So I'm gonna position this right over the edit point. And then with this interview O2 clip selected, I'm gonna click on the overwrite edit button. That's this one here. So here we go on three, two, one. 
and it overwrote the clip that was already in the project. So interview three isn't even there anymore. By the way, there's also a keyboard shortcut for that. If I hover over this, you can see the tool tip lets you know that the letter D on the keyboard will do an overwrite edit. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. Let's do an insert edit again to get that interview O2 back down there. So I'll just come up here, make sure this part's selected, hit W on the keyboard to do an insert edit. Now that I have multiple clips in the timeline, let me show you how you can move these around. It's very easy, you can just click and drag to move them around. So let's say I want this interview O3 clip to be at the beginning. I can just click and drag like this, and then I pay attention to where the mouse pointer is. You can see if I can just kind of position it right before interview 01, that little window frame pops up letting me know this is where that clip's gonna go, and then I let go, and it pops it right into position. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. So you can move clips around, if I wanna move this 03 clip later in my storyline, if I go like this and wanna move it later, that doesn't work. Watch what happens. I'm gonna let go and it snaps right back into position. That's because it's using the magnetic timeline. It nestles the clips right up next to each other automatically. Usually that's what you want, but when you don't want it, you can use something called the position tool. So I'm gonna click here, go down to the position tool or the letter P on the keyboard, we'll do the same thing. Now I've got my position tool activated, you can tell by looking at it. Now watch what happens. If I click and drag and move this out here, then it'll just stay in position and Final Cut Pro will automatically create a placeholder type of gap clip for me that just creates space. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that and then I'll also switch back to my regular select tool. And then I'm gonna scroll over so I can see my project a little bit better. And then finally, I wanna show you a connect edit. A connect edit is a way of attaching or connecting one clip to another one. Let's say I wanna grab this clip here and it's called laugh. And let's say I wanna grab that and connect it to interview 03. So what I'll do is I'll just click and drag and bring it down and layer it on top. And you can see there's that line there, that's the connection point. And I'll just kind of roughly put it here. It doesn't have to be exact because this is only temporary, but I'm gonna let go. And now I've connected the clip to interview 03. In fact, if I take this interview 03 clip and move it, you'll see that the connected clip goes with it. So I can move it over here and reposition it to here in the timeline, for example. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. If, by the way, you don't want to have the connected clip go with it, there's a keyboard shortcut that can override that and that's the Grav on the keyboard. The Grav is up underneath the escape key right next to the one. Now this is one of those keyboard shortcuts that can differ based on where you are in the world. So you might need to Google the command. It's called override connections. But if I hold down Grav on the keyboard, you can see that little icon appears letting me know it's going to override the connection point. And so I can go like this and just click and drag and move this. And you can see that the connected clip is going to stay behind. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. I'll select the laugh clip and I'll delete it. I wanna show you another way to do the connect edit. So I'll hit delete on the keyboard and then I'll position the playhead over here. And then I'm gonna come up here to this clip and let's say I wanna apply it again. I wanna connect it again. This time I'm gonna use the connect edit button, which is this one here. So I'll just click it and it gets connected right where the playhead was and there's that connection point. Sometimes it helps to see the connection point if you select the clip like this, it kinda of makes it show up a little bit better. Now, why do we even create this connected clip to begin with? Well, what happens is when this plays back in the project, Final Cut Pro will play back both of these clips at the same time. So a lot of times you use a connected clip like this as a cutaway where maybe Trinity is talking about something in this clip, but then we show what she's talking about in this clip up here. And the thing about this to know is that you hear the audio from both clips at the same time. So if I play this back, we're going to see this clip, but hear the audio from both. Let's take a look. So, what do you think? I love it. I can't wait to, like, I can't wait to go somewhere. But, like, totally just rock this look. And I'll stop the playback. So you can see how a connected clip is a great way to create a cutaway because you see the video on top, but you hear the audio from both. Now the audio needs to work well together. In this case, it doesn't, but if you can get the audio to work well together, it's a very powerful way to create a cutaway. And I wanna draw your attention just briefly to your computer keyboard and look at Q, W, and E. And you'll see that E is the keyboard shortcut for an append edit, and W is for insert edit, and Q is for a connect edit. And then you also have the letter D, which is right up there next to those for an overwrite edit. So if you wanna edit quickly, you can keep your fingers on your hand on those keyboard shortcuts and very quickly edit footage into your project. I'll get rid of this connected clip. I'm just gonna select it and hit delete on the keyboard. 
And I'll also show you how to turn on something else that can be useful. I'm gonna to go to the View menu and then go down to Browser and then where it says Used Media Ranges, I'm gonna turn that on. Now you can see orange lines appearing in the areas of the clips here in the browser indicating that those sections, those ranges are being used in a project currently. Also, I should mention that at no point here have I said, okay, let's save our project. And the reason for that is because Final Cut Pro will automatically save your project, all the edits that you do as you do them. So that's something you don't have to worry about. Anyway, those are several different ways that you can edit footage into a project in Final Cut Pro.